Dr. Singhvi, it appears the more things change, the more they remain the same in the Congress. You've chosen, it appears, the unofficial official candidate, an octogenarian, at a time when the Congress is giving, talking about giving a facelift. How will Mr. Kharge give a facelift to your party? Uh, Rajdeep, I would like to say with great respect, I, I have actually three takeaways, which I'll not say first, I'll answer your question first. Mm -hmm. uh, does that question not uh, encapsulate an anti-democratic spirit? Can you and I decide that only people below a certain age or above a certain age can stand? I mean, this is the entire meaning of a democratic process. Mm -hmm. There was a very great likelihood of Mr. Gehlot standing, who was not that young. Mr. Tharoor is much younger. Mr. Digvijay Singh's uh, name was in the hat. And finally, for a variety of reasons, Mr. Kharge is standing. Now, that is the way you take it as it comes. You don't determine, predetermine and set rules. It would be undemocratic to say that you don't have a younger man. Actually, I would have liked younger people. Mm -hmm. There is complete openness for anyone to stand. How you so know, you're, you're, you're saying, no, no, one minute. You're, you're saying there's complete openness, but the problem is that Mr. Kharge, as I said, seems to have been selected by the Congress High Command purely on the basis of his unflinching loyalty to the Gandhi family. The High Command tells us they're going to stay neutral. The Gandhis will not get involved. And yet, at the last moment, Mr. Kharge is handpicked almost as a selected candidate. That's the point. That's the point. Uh, this is nothing but media speculation earlier about Mr. Gelo, now about Mr. Kharge. Let me just start by saying very briefly and quickly, the important takeaway which is being missed is there is actually admittedly, undeniably a free, fair, open, transparent election. One, two, no Gandhi is standing. Mm -hmm. No Gandhi has been in a government for 30 years, but no Gandhi is standing for the uh, uh, party elections, though there is overwhelming support and demand for it. And thirdly, somewhat unpleasant events which should have been avoidable in Rajasthan are behind us. Now, having said that, how does one answer the question that you will not be in government for 30 years, you are not now going to be in the party also, but you are always going to say that no, Gandhi is controlling. Well, you have to just wait and watch when you are a president. How do you assume that it will go on endlessly? I have been saying on other channels that kuch to log kahenge, logon ka kaam hai kehna. if we are not here to answer critics who will never be satisfied, no, if no. the Gandhi then the Gandhi, if the Gandhi doesn't stand, then he's controlling. I mean, can you have an no, no. answer to such situations? No, no, no. no. You know, uh, uh, Dr. Singh, the fact is all roads lead to 10 Janpat. Whether it was the Rajasthan crisis that eventually had to be resolved at Sonia Gandhi's house or whether it appears to be the question of Congress presidentship, all roads lead to 10 Janpat, which is one of the reasons why so many people didn't even want to contest. Many people feel that even if they are offered the post, they will have to work completely with the Gandhis having all the power and therefore this is a party that is unable to break the status quo and reward merit of people who could have an independent identity. Uh, Rajdeep, is there a fair question? How many parties in India have had an election like this? How many parties have broken from government office and now to party office and you are saying not break with the status quo? I don't think you can name even one example in this country which has had this and let me tell you, in a sense, Mr. Rahul Gandhi can be rightly accused of being anti-democratic also. Because he knows and you know and I know that today if he stood for elections, he would win overwhelmingly. So in that sense, he has negated the overwhelming demand of the Congress for him to stand. Is that not breaking? Do so Dr. Singh, we, the charge is Rahul Gandhi today wants power without responsibility. And whoever will be the Congress president will have all the accountability without power. Do you think that is so easy to say? People ignore the real remote controls of Nagpur and elsewhere and talk about this. Do you think that a person who has refused steadfastly to stand and is today distancing himself, and in fact the other Gandhis are also distancing, this charge continuing? I mean, no answer to a charge. This is, you know, uh, there is an election. Nobody is saying and nobody can say that any process of this election is unfair or vitiated or compromised. So you are saying that, no, despite a free and fair election, he will be having this and that. Well, I don't think that's a fair charge. Let every other party, let me tell you this, let every other party do this. Let the regional parties do this and say, look, no, no. we are not going to, but I'm going to control Dr. From Singh, we, your do party, let's be honest, without getting into water boundary, I will ask you, therefore, one final question. Who's your pick? Shashi Tharoor or Malik Arjun Kharge? Well, I mean, first of all, it's a secret vote. Secondly, I'm one of the ten who has proposed Mr. Kharge. So I don't think I need to speak more about that on candid camera. But the point is, it's a free, fair, independent vote. 
it is volitional. It is my vote and I wish anybody could have stood. There is no inhibition, no restriction anywhere. I Let me ask you, would you stand one day for the Congress president? Maybe you'll stand one day, Dr. Singhvi. Who knows? With your good wishes, let us see.